that lets you... We're not telling you to go ahead and try to cut out everyone negative in your life. All we're trying to do is say, create some space and allow the opportunity for yourself to grow. And you can grow by bringing more positive people into your life. Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated, Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in, for being a part of our True Form Life community. We're coming at you with a brand new show. We appreciate whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world. We certainly wouldn't be here without you. So stick around. We got all that coming up. This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. Today I'm talking about building a community. I really enjoy this topic because it's so important. And I want to explain my background, where I came from, and then the background of, or and then we're, how we move forward. Um, so I guess when it comes down to it, so I played a professional baseball. I played sports throughout my whole life. And I played professional baseball for about 10 years, traveled all around the world. I played in Australia, Germany. We, I played on horrible teams. We, I played on many championship teams. So I know what it's like to build a community and I know what it's like to be a part of a supportive community. So that's where the very basics come from when I talk about building a community is that I know that the success rate for a team and you'll see me, I often say like we, in our fitness family, I call them team. Sometimes on our true form page, I say, Hey team, need a little bit of help here, whatever it is. It's because I, I feel like we're all team oriented in some way. And I don't mean like, you don't have to be a sports team. I'm talking about the community that we're building and we're all part of the same team. We're part of the same movement. We're all one and I don't want to get too deep, but I feel like we're all connected in some way or should be. And deep down, even though like as an introvert, to my core and being surrounded by introverts because we kind of attract you attract like attracts like right you still want to be part of a community you still want to be part of a team <clears throat> and that's what i want to talk about here and and why it's so important for us to build this community if you go to our youtube channel youtube.com slash true form life uh we have old we have thousand like over a thousand videos on there and some are really old and you can see me doing a video and they're really bad because I'm like have this really hard shell and I can't really speak and I have don't really have much personality on camera. So um, Dorothy's craziness definitely helped with that. But and then people say you're an introvert, and it's true. Like I would much rather much. I'm very comfortable by myself reading a book or doing something like working out by myself or doing something where it's not like where there's a bunch of people or in front of a camera or whatever it is like a big event. Like I don't like don't go to the bar anymore. <laughs> past that um i'd rather not go to a concert where there's like a thousand people or hundreds of people like that's just not my thing but and there's nothing wrong and that's i just want to let people know that everyone i think a lot of people think that there's a problem with being an introvert it's just your comfort level i'm happy i love being around friends and family and i love being in, in groups and i like to speak on stage but that doesn't mean i'm not an introvert like introvert is comes from within i think like you're either an extrovert or extrovert. I almost feel like you're born with that. Some people just like to be like Dorothy. She's an extrovert. If you couldn't, you couldn't tell. <laughs> Which is maybe why we get along so well. So when it comes, so when it comes to building a team, I know what it's like to build a team and to be surrounded by a team that's successful. So in we, I was very like we, we were really successful in in the high school. We won back-to-back -back championships in high school baseball. We won back-to-back -back championships in high school football. Um, when I got to different levels, we didn't win in college very, very much or university. That was a tough go. But when I got to the professional level, I started traveling around the world. I was on, I was on different teams that won championships. In Arizona, we won a championship. In Texas, we made it to the playoffs and we shouldn't have. Same thing when I was in Australia, we were... They called us the underdogs and we had to go to everyone else's field because we just squeaked into the playoffs and we made it to the finals. And then one of our guys signed a contract 
to go somewhere else and had to leave early. It was really odd. I, I broke my hand. I broke my finger and so my hand was like a balloon. So I was trying to play with like one arm. So we were, we were really thin. So we ended up losing in the finals for in Australia, but it was, it was what I'm getting at here is that I know very clearly is like, I can see right through if you have a supportive team, how much easier life is, how much more successful you can be as an individual and as a team. So when we talk about building a community or when we talk about being a team player, we know the success. And some people haven't been on a team or some people at work, you've never had the opportunity to have a supportive team. Maybe you always have a boss that looks down at, at you, or you always have employees that are trying to compete with you or put you down or take your job, for example. I've been in both situations. I actually worked at a place not too long ago. <coughs> and it was it was so like fake, if you will. It was so pretend like, oh, how's everyone doing? But no one really seemed to like each other. I was new to the to the club. And it was <coughs> there was only a, a handful of employees and people working but i didn't feel like the top person was super like interested in your success more so their own success and the people around they weren't <coughs> excuse me they weren't very supportive either so that team atmosphere didn't have a chance to grow and build and be successful so when we look at like we have to look at those other areas of our lives where there is success or where you can find success, for example. So if we translate our workplace or sports or other areas where there are groups, we have to we have to understand that these people, and I'm talking about your family, your friends, that's why so often Dorothy and I say like, you have to break up with the people, with your friends that aren't friends. Like if they're not supportive, if they're not happy for you, if they're not excited for you when you achieve, if they're envious, they're not friends. <laughs> I got to tell you, and it could be family members. I know that's difficult to hear. It could be your best friends for years that don't really appreciate your success. Like we have to understand that we have to create space between those people because the closest people in your lives are the ones that influence you the most. So these are the ones that you text every day that maybe you Facebook message you do. I don't know if anyone's doing Snapchat. It's not really our platform. Maybe you're doing Snapchat on a regular basis. Whatever, whatever it is that you're doing, understand that the people that are closest to you influence you the most. So if you have people that are in your close community and they're negative, if they're always complaining, if they're miserable, if they're always dragging you down, if they put you down, and if they're never happy about your success, they are weighing you down. They're, they are dragging you down. It's like a crab. I don't know if any of you heard of this analogy. You put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and every once in a while, a crab will climb the side of the, the side of this, of the bucket and it'll try to pull itself out. And the other crabs will grab it and pull it back down. And I believe that the crabs are trying to use that person to pull themselves up higher. Just understand that the crabs in the bucket are not your friends. They're trying to prevent you from succeeding at a higher level. So again, we talk about building a community. We talk about building a team and surround a, 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 um, an environment of people to lift you up. The problem is most people are surrounded with crabs. <laughs> most of the time we're surrounded with people that aren't achieving the success level that they want and they don't want anyone else to either. If you look at the most successful people in the world, the most successful entrepreneurs, they hang out with successful entrepreneurs. Do you think Richard Branson has people that tell him he's a failure everywhere he goes? Absolutely not. He wouldn't even consider putting someone like that in, in his circle. If you look at Olympic athletes, they hang out with other Olympic athletes. They don't hang out with people that are I played on, I played on a number of different levels in baseball. On the lower levels, people were pretty angry. Like everyone thought they should be at a higher level. Everyone thought they should have been, they should be better than they are, or everyone should feel like they get more playing time. But then I got up to different levels or maybe even different teams, if you will. And people actually were happy for your success or they actually tried to push you further. So what I'm saying here is that. You have to find people in your life that will lift you up and will push you forward. <coughs> and they don't just like bump into you in most cases. They're not like, hey, you seem like a good person. How can I positively influence you? I don't know if it's like innate in us or, or part of our culture or I don't know what it is in seemingly the majority of people, but it doesn't seem like, it doesn't feel like people just naturally want you to succeed. And I think that's because it makes them feel like 
less of a success. So we have to go and find the people that will create more success, more success in our lives by those that are positive and happy and will lift you up. The thing that bothers me or the thing that I feel the most in that regard is that I think that a lot of people don't realize that's not normal or it's not okay. So <coughs> some people have lived, have lived in the, like I, I have some good friends that I grew up with. They were in the corporate world since they're 18 and that's all they know. And, and in that situation, they don't know that living in an unsupported environment is not normal and is not going to help you succeed. And they also don't know that there's other options. Like they don't know that you can go to other areas <laughs> of your career and find people that are actually supportive. They're actually happy to see you at work. So when like Dorothy and I are, are pretty, um, privileged, if you will, and don't get me wrong. We worked extremely hard for this life, but if there's someone that we don't want to work with, we don't work with them. <laughs> it's all there is to it. And, and if there's people that bring us down, then we push them aside because, and I don't mean to say that rudely. I mean to say that like you have to protect your well being and it starts with the people that are in your life. So if you have someone that's always negative in your life, or if I do, then I try to distance myself from them. And if those people are all like always have gossip or always complaining about something, then you create a little bit more distance. And here's the issue. Like it's like when we say we want you to put cleaner foods in your fridge, for example, or in your bathroom. We never expect someone to go and grab a garbage bag and start dumping everything out from the bathroom in the garbage bag. Or you don't go in the pantry or the fridge and you clear everything out. First of all, it's terribly wasteful. <laughs> you have a lot of money invested in those products, whether it's the fridge or the bathroom, for example. Um, Dorothy says you're only going to be as good as the people you surround yourself with. Be brave enough to let go of those who keep weighing you down. Very nice, Dorothy. But what I'm, what I'm getting at here is that if you create space, so when you, when you look at the analogy of like the bathroom or the fridge and clearing everything out, I, you see that on TV or you see that on an, uh, like a Facebook ad. It's not real life because the thing is, if you don't learn and if you don't look to the root of the issue, you're just going to go buy, go back and buy the same things you just threw out. So what you have to do is, Instead of throwing things out, you add one thing that's better quality. For example, <laughs> you add, then you add another thing and you start using that product. And then you start putting the lower quality products to the side that you're not using and you replace on with another good quality product. And when you start to use better quality products, you know, whether that's on your body, like we, 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 we think of everything. Like we are, this is a whole lifestyle we live. We look at toothpaste, we look at deodorant, we look at face wash, we look at, essential oils, whatever it is that we're using, we look at better quality, like we want a better quality of life. That's what we teach. We give you tools to improve your, your health and your life for the rest of your life. No quick fixes, no weekend fads, no fasts. This is, it's true. This is real life. So if you look at your fridge, for example, instead of throwing everything out, you go and you grab a better condiment, let's say. So instead of, um, I don't, I don't know, like a like uh, soya sauce, for example, maybe you have, maybe you grab yourself some coconut aminos, for example, and you put that next to the soy sauce. Or you got the hot sauce in there. Maybe you have a clean hot sauce with all clean ingredients, like something like Frank's. It's, it's rare that I'll mention a huge mainstream company that's clean or I'd support, but Frank's, it's pretty good. <laughs> and it's clean. So you, so you go and you put a better quality one next to it. And the thing is, like, that's why we talk about it's a lifestyle thing. It's not, it's the way we live. Everything is the way we live. So if you look at someone that's like, oh, I'm just going to go work out and I'm going to see results. I'm just going to start working out. But they don't consider their environment what we're talking about today and their supportive community. They don't, they don't consider what's going to happen when they hit a speed bump. They don't consider creating a plan, having a plan laid out for you in advance or finding that supportive community, whether that be accountability partner, someone to work out with, a partner, a coach, and it doesn't last. That's the problem. The thing, the biggest issue when it comes to people that don't change their lifestyle, they only do something for a couple of days or a couple of weeks is they're not changing their lifestyle. So we have to change our lifestyle. And that begins with the people that we're surrounding ourselves with. So when I was, so I talked about those people that I, that I don't feel are supportive in my life, I create, I try to create space. So you talk to them a little bit less, 
I know this doesn't sound nice to a lot of people, but you have to do it. There's no other way around it. Otherwise, you're going to continue to surround yourself with people that are weighing you down. So what you do is you create a little bit more space and then you create a little bit more space and maybe they're still in your life, but you create a little bit more space. And then <coughs> what happens is, see, right now, like we are surrounded by people that are negative in our lives and we have no room for positive people. You don't have any extra time to text or email or to hang out or have play golf with, to drink with, whatever you want to do. There's no room because those people have surrounded you. They're You're marinating in <laughs> these people that are dragging you down. So by creating space, you give yourself the opportunity to put more positive people in your life. So we're not telling you to go ahead and try to cut out everyone negative in your, in your life. All we're trying to do is say, create some space, and allow the opportunity for yourself to grow. And you can grow by bringing po more positive people into your life. That is the basics of what I want to talk about. Basis, not basics. Now, one of the things that I, I noticed very clearly, so this is why we created the, the fitness family, that what we call, this is our membership group. And when it comes to where I started, so I started out in, I started to run um, personal training. I started out with fitness classes, but it really was really began with personal training. And I realized that there was no supportive, there was no supportive community. There was just me. And so just me as a coach and the individual. So there was about, so that was just one hour, usually like, so one, two hours a week, possibly. And, and maybe, I mean, so usually two hours a week. Maybe I'd see someone once a week. It was rare. In most cases, I'd see someone twice a week. Sometimes I'd see them three times a week, but it, it was expensive. I don't know. Like I was charging 50 or 60 bucks an hour. Like that's what, that's what you charge. And that's what you have to pay if you want a personal trainer. So it would get expensive. <coughs> so usually twice a week was what I would recommend if you want to see some results. But then I would give them homework. I would check nutrition journals or success journals. I would check their cardio. I would talk about their lifestyle. Okay, so when I, when I when in personal training, I would it'd be one on one, like one on one client. So it was so it's me and that person, and then I wouldn't see that person for maybe another five days or another two days, another three days. They had no supportive family, no supportive friends. They wouldn't stay on track with nutrition. They wouldn't work out if I wasn't standing there. <laughs> so that's one individual, and I noticed very is very clear to me that they had no support with them. So they, they had a very small chance to succeed. So if you look at what we look at is um, nutrition, fitness, and support. Those are three things. So you can look at 33% each to get almost 100%. So if you have a personal trainer, you have 33% or a fitness class, for example. I'll get to that in a minute. 33% to succeed. If you have, if you're doing fitness and you have someone to help with nutrition, then you have 66% chance to succeed. And then if you have a supportive community, you have someone to help. You have a supportive community, you have someone to help with fitness, and you have someone to help with nutrition, you have a 99% cent, 99 chance to succeed in the overall well-being of the program that we put together, but that we feel that you need to find a healthy lifestyle. And it, it, it takes time. Like We're not saying it's going to happen overnight. All we're saying is to create some space and add better into your life. We, we create, choose better. That, that's gotta be like a slogan for us or like it's gotta be put on a t-shirt, Dorothy. Choose better in your life and work towards better. So whatever kind of day you had today, tomorrow, choose better. <coughs> whatever type, of, <coughs> excuse me, whatever type of workout you had today, there's always another opportunity to choose better. And if you choose better, you'll continually progress with whatever it is that you're doing. So I went over the personal training aspect. It was clear that they didn't have that supportive community. Then I looked at fitness classes. I, I taught fitness classes for years. I did that almost full time. I taught Monday, Wednesday, Friday, twice a day. And then I taught Tuesday, Thursday, once a day. And then I was doing personal training in the evening. So what I realized with, what I realized with the fitness classes is that you, you started to build that community, which was very clear. It was, it was almost eye opening. Like, wow, people started to become friends. People would hang out after class. They'd come before class. They would come just to see their friends, not to work out, <laughs> which is okay. You know, judgment free zone. So you could look at, so you could look at they're coming for this, the supportive community is what they're building. And then you get a little bit of working out in there. 
which is fine. So let's say maybe you have, you, you have working out and then you have community. You're still missing nutrition in there. I think like in most cases you go to fitness class. I've been to fitness classes where the trainers were talking about beer and wings after class. I don't, Dorothy, you know what I'm talking about. It was, it was kind of odd, but we teach lifestyle. Understand that we we're, we're a different breed. <laughs> a lot of times when you go and hire a nutrition coach, it's just nutrition. Um, if you go and if you go hire, if you go to a fitness class or if you hire, um, a, a trainer or it's, it's fitness in most cases, like a lot of them don't know nutrition. They don't live nutrition, nutritionally. <laughs> All they do is specialize in what they do. I think it's rare to find someone that's good and lives the lifestyle. I talk, had a really cool conversation with George and he says, you guys are amazing. He said, I really like that you guys live the lifestyle. You're not just talking or telling people what to do. You actually do it, which was nice to hear. So when it comes to the fitness, for example, Dorothy says, I never went to class just to visit. <laughs> you guys know who you were. I would go, go come to class like trying to get people fit and active and they're like, so excited to see each other. They see each other like two or three times a week. I'm like, you just saw each other. What are you so, so excited about? <coughs> but that was, it was, it was really nice. Like we still have conversations about our fitness classes that we used to put together in the community because they're so much fun. We would dress for birthdays. We would have a tickle box and we'd have a, a bag of people that would dress up. I, that was a, that was a, a goal and dream of mine when I started fitness classes that I wanted them to be fun and exciting and different. So we would celebrate birthdays. We'd bring out snacks. We'd have a potluck. So those that we're looking at three different avenues. The problem is, is, is if you have, if you just have the fitness fitness class, you kind of miss out on the nutrition. I think a lot of people are like, and we hear this all the time. Oh, my nutrition is good. I just need fitness. And then we look at a nutrition journal and we're like, like, how would you compare? Like, it's hard to compare what's good and what isn't right. Um, and it's, it, if that goes back to like our perspective, like if you don't have someone that knows what they're talking about looking in on you. So for example, I give this, I give this example all the time. When I was working at the first, this first gym, some guy, these guys would all, let me tell you real quick. I was playing baseball. I was traveling around the world. I played professional and there was in between seasons, I would go back and I started working at a gym and I was just working at the desk reception. And by this time, it's been years of, I spent years in college or you know, in university and playing it professionally. And people would come, I would make my own programs. I'd make my own nutrition programs, my own fitness programs. I was always looking through a fitness magazine. I would spend hours in the gym, literally. I would, I would work out for an hour, hour and a half. And I would go before and I'd read nutrition books and I would sit there after and I just like hang out. That was my life. A hundred percent. I was a full-time athlete. That's what I did. And I suppose it's interesting now. A lot of people are like, oh, what else do you do? And like, we don't do anything else. This is what we do full-time. We do fitness and nutrition and lifestyle a hundred percent. It's not a hobby. It's not a side gig. This is what we do. But when I was when I was learning about nutrition and fitness, it was years that I was studying, experimenting on my own self. Then I had teammates that were like, whoa, I, 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 would, I could gain weight quickly because I knew what to eat. I could, uh, I could gain weight in the off season. Then I could slim down. I was doing speed programs. I was doing it for years. And then I went to the gym and I was just working the desk. I was just working reception basically. And then someone would ask me a question and I would tell them the question that I'd answer that I'd answer for them. And they're like, oh, and then they'd come back and ask again something else. And then they'd send their friend to come over and ask me some questions. And then I was like, so at this time I was answering more questions than I was running the desk. People would just come to the gym to talk to me about fitness and nutrition. So <laughs> then I started taking, I, I was like, well, maybe I should train people. If, um, maybe I should train people and make a little bit more money. I was making minimum wage at the front desk. I think it was like 10 or 12 bucks an hour or they were charging, I was charging 50 bucks an hour for training. So I was like, okay, that's a no brainer. So that's how I progressed and how I made those changes. But it all, it all began somewhere. Like it always, ha always has to start somewhere and then it needs to progress. It was eye opening to me when I was playing professional. I came down here and I joined a, a, a speed program and I would, so I would, I, I trained three, four times a day. I, that's, I said that's what I did full time. So, um, I would like literally sit in a gym. Like this is L Los Angeles. I was when I was training for my pro seasons is that I would sit in a gym. And then I would, and then I, like, I'd be working out and I would see a trainer, like sitting there looking at a program, telling someone like reading what, what they should do to this person. Like telling, like 
there was there was no structure. They didn't really know what they were doing. They they didn't look very healthy themselves. They just read the program. So for me, that was quite eye opening to be like, if someone's paying that one some someone pretty good money to not that someone that doesn't really know what they're doing, they're just reading off a sheet. It's a bit scary to, to me. When I used to go to the gym, like I I don't go to the gym anymore. I work out. I have a TRX. I have rings I use. I do our true form workouts, full body weight stuff. I just like to swim, skateboard, ride bike. Like that's an active lifestyle to me. Working out for 45 minutes or an hour and a half and then never walking or never being active again throughout the rest of the day or not paying attention to your food. For me, that's not a fit and healthy active lifestyle. So, but when we were at the gym, I would often hear it was like a Thursday or Friday we're working out and people were talking about what bar they're going to or what wing night it is. And I'm like, what, what do you guys, and I think that we, we feel <clears throat> that if we go to the gym and work out, or if we have, a, if we go to the gym and work out, we can eat whatever we want. Or if we have a salad that eliminate, like have one salad a day that eliminates everything else we eat, which obviously is not the case. So, okay. <clears throat> so let me, let me tell, let me explain the program. So what we call our fitness family. We designed this probably three years ago, roughly. And I wanted to address nutrition. We know that that is, has to be a staple in living a healthy lifestyle. If you're working out all, like, well, most cases we work out an hour a day. In this case, in this program, we're working out seven minutes, but we eat or should be eating throughout the day. In most cases, we're not working out or even being active throughout the day. So we have to know that nutrition plays a role. And then being fit, being fit, you have to work out in some regard. And when I say work out, I don't mean you have to be in the gym for hours at a time. Like I said, you can be outside, you can be running, jogging, walking, riding your bike, you can be doing a seven minute workout, you walk your dog in the evening, whatever it is, you have to be more active. So we have nutrition, then you have to be you have to do something fitness wise on a regular basis. And in most cases, like there's a very small percentage of people that could go online and they could grab a, a workout and then do it consistently to see results, a very small percentage. So you could do that. But when I'm talking about fitness, I'm talking about having a trainer or a fitness coach or an accountability partner or some kind of coach to, to be there to walk you through it. So you have nutrition. And when I talk about nutrition, again, I'm talking about someone that can create a meal plan for you, something that you're going to follow, something that will fit into your lifestyle. You need to find something that you're going, that's going to keep you accountable with fitness to keep you being active on a regular basis. You need to find a community, you need to pe find people that are talking about, Hey, just got my workout done, going for a bike ride. Um, how can I, how can I be more active? How can I change this nutrition plan or what can I eat? today for this you need to have find people that are going to um continually strive for better and so regardless of where you look in your life you could try to find step challenges online you could try to find uh free groups if you like um you could try to create them in your workplace the problem is it's challenging to find that but at least now you have the information that these are the three things that we found success it's accountability with fitness on a regular basis it's a plan when it comes to nutrition. It's not like, it's not like, oh, what am I going to have today? Or what are we focusing on today? It's about, um, it's about having those people around you that are going to make a difference in your life continually. It takes constant effort. It takes ups and downs. It takes struggles to find successes. And it takes a supportive community to lift you up when you're struggling or to pick you up when you fall down. Cause it's going to happen. And you want supportive people in your life to do that for you and with you. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. You can always find us on Facebook.com slash True Form Life. We post up there a couple times a day on our story. We're always trying to bring you more content around living a healthy lifestyle, whether that be nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. We also have free challenges that we do at least once a month. So if you follow us along there, you'll be able to join maybe a plank challenge or a squat challenge to bat a challenge whatever it may be we'd love to have you join us we're also on instagram.com slash drew tadia again we're posting up there a couple times a day along with our story all dedicated to keeping you fit and healthy and on track our main website is trueformlife.com if you want to check out some of our products some of our services or if you just want some great content from videos to blog posts and recipes and more we got all that 
at trueformlife.com. Once again, thank you so much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.